Hi guys, Ben at Carbo Creations, and I just got myself a 3D printer. You may be thinking, there's no 3D printer, or that's a lot more than a 3D printer. Well, let me tell you what I've got. Here, I've got an ANET A8 3D printer. It's a do-it-yourself kit that's a variation of the Prusa i3. I purchased this from GearBest. It was about 180 Australian dollars, and it took about two to three weeks to get here. While I was waiting for it, I did a ton of research on modifications I could do to it and really what I was getting myself into. I've never done 3D printing before, but always thought, what could I make if I ever got a printer? Now I've trolled forums and user groups. Uh, the Facebook group has been really helpful. And something I found out about these printers uh, is that they have a tendency to not be powered correctly. The stock power supply doesn't have its own fan, so it's unable to regulate its own temperature. It doesn't have an inbuilt uh, breaker or fuse. It has no power switch, so you've got to rely on uh, the mains power to turn it on and off. The power supply also doesn't come pre-wired, which adds a level of risk for those of us who haven't had a background in wiring or aren't real confident with wiring a power supply. The other big issue this printer has is that the stock power supply cable and connector for the heat bed isn't wired up correctly. This can lead to burnt out connectors, uh, catastrophic failure of the printer, and I'll show you how I went about dealing with this issue a little later in the video. So what I'm going to show you here is some of the things I researched and some of the mods uh, I have out of the box that aren't printed. So you'll see me build this from straight kit with everything I've got here. So let me take you through some of the extra parts that I got for this printer. I've got the Thermaltake 650 watt ATX power supply. This is going to replace the 12 volt power supply that comes with this model. Uh, the other advantages I've got with using this ATX power supply one, it's got cables already connected, and you can also see a couple of uh, four pin and eight pin terminations. So I don't have to do much hacking and slashing, and I'll show you that a bit later on. It's also been recommended by a lot of users to get a MOSFET. What this uh, device does is it takes the power draw away from the main board and stops it from melting and shorting out and basically overloading it. So again, I'll show you how to wire that up in a little bit. I also have a build tack printing surface which I got actually recommended to me by a mate of mine at work. Uh, he's got one of these printers and swears by this product. It allows prints to come off easily and you don't have to clean it and uh, re-level your bed every time. So it's gonna save some costs on painter's tape. Now I got this build tack from a website, Torwell. As well as selling the build tack adhesion surface, Torwell Australia also stock a range of premium nozzles for the Mark 8 extruder, which is used by the ANAT A8, as well as nozzles for the E3D and the E3D Volcano. They've also got an extensive range of filaments, including PLA, ABS, Woodfill, Silk, PETG, and others, and they're at some of the best competitive prices I've seen. And I've included a link to the Torwell website in the description below, so be sure to go check him out. He's got some great stuff for 3D printers. The remaining items that I've bought are spares for the parts that are most likely to need replacing. These include thermistors, heating pipes, hot ends, and nozzles of varying different sizes. So those are the out of the box upgrades I'm gonna go with straight off the bat. Now it's the fun part, starting to build. while doing some research was when mounting the H-plate for the heat bed, mount it upside down. The reason for this is, if it's mounted as per the instruction, there's additional strain on the wire axis belt as it's actually lifted up higher than the parallel. Once you've flipped it, the belt becomes more level and there'll be less wear and tear on the wire axis belt. One of the issues with the ANET A8 kit is the hotbed's inadequate power cable. The bed itself is fine, but the connection needs to be addressed both in terms of the number of wires to match the bed and also needs adequate cable strain relief to prevent arcing within the connector as the bed moves when printing. As you can see, the heater bed has been manufactured with the connections for the thermistor in the middle and dual power inputs on the outer edges. Yet the connector, as I showed you earlier, is only wired for a single power input 
which is one of the reasons for so many A8 owners to have burnt connections. The reason for this is that the heat bed draws approximately 12 amps, while the connector, each pin, is only rated for 10 amps. So with only using one of the power inputs, each pin is trying to draw the full 12 amps, and this is what leads to the pins burning out. The way I've chosen to address this issue is by purchasing a spare VHR-6N JST connector and the corresponding pins from an electronic supplier. I'll leave the link in the description for where I got mine from. In my opinion, this is the most efficient way to solve this issue as it doesn't rely on you having the appropriate soldering equipment or skills. Once you have stripped the wires and crimped them into the pin housing, you can slide them straight into the stock JST connector. Also remember to join and crimp the wires at the other end when connecting to the mainboard or the MOSFET. Now that a second power circuit has been added to the heat bed, the power load is now distributed across four pins instead of two. This reduces the load from 12 amps per pin to 6 amps per pin, which is under the 10 amp threshold for the connector. The total cost for this solution is less than 5 bucks, and as you can see, uses the existing cable loom to keep things nice and simple. The second issue with the heat bed connection, as I mentioned, is the lack of adequate cable strain relief for the connection. What happens is as the bed moves backwards and forwards while printing, the connection, if not secured properly, will wobble with the movement. This causes the pins within the connector to disconnect an arc, creating excess heat and oxidization, which can lead to a catastrophic failure. Keep in mind this will not happen straight away, but after many tens if not hundreds of hours of printing and bed movement. However, it is still important to address this as soon as possible. After I got my printer up and running, I printed a Y-axis cable chain from Thingiverse.com. This bolts to the heat bed and secures not only the connection, but also the wires and assists with cable management. Next I'm replacing the stock power supply unit with the Thermaltake ATX power supply. I've chosen to go down this route as the ATX power supply has its own power switch. All the wiring is connected, tested and safely terminated from the factory. It's cooled by its own 120mm fan so it can deal with longer prints and higher ambient temperatures. And the 12 volt power rail comfortably provides over 30 amps. It also has the additional capability for hooking up other fans and lights and other mods as well. I've seen other 3D printer owners use this mod and they cut and re-terminate the wires from the existing power loom. I'm not going to do that. In the spirit of good cable management and neatness, I'll be connecting the power supply to the printer using Molex connectors. Before I start physically cabling, I want to break down what wiring I need and which parts need to be connected. I'm hooking up the power supply to a MOSFET for the heat bed and one for the hot end as well and also to the main board. The printer is a 12 volt system, so I'll be using the 4x4 12 volt ATX lead from the power supply. I'll also need to jump the power pin on the 24 pin cable to ensure that the system powers on as well. Looking at the pinout for the 24 pin cable, I'll need to connect the PS underscore on, which is the green box in the diagram, to a ground or com, which is any of the black boxes, to complete a circuit. Luckily, these types of plugs are available from most PC part stores, the 4x4 12 volt cable from the power supply provides 12 volts to each 4 pin connector. Therefore, I'm going to connect one to the main board and the other to the MOSFET for the heat bed so they're powered independently as I have the ability to do so in this case. The hot end MOSFET will be powered off the heated MOSFET. The two pin comms cables on each MOSFET will need to be wired to the corresponding power outs on the main board. So the heat bed to the heat bed power out, the hot end to the hot end power out. It does not matter which way these cables are connected in regards to positive and negative polarity. The final step in the power circuit is to connect the heat bed to the heat bed MOSFET and the hot end to the hot end MOSFET. It's very important to get this right as each part is heated to different temperatures and having them reversed will result in incorrect heating and possible failure of the printer. I'm also going to crimp fork spades on the end of all my wires for a better connection to the terminals. The other advantage of doing this is it adds a layer of insulation to the end of the wire to prevent loose arcing connections. I don't recommend terminating with bare wires as it increases your risk of failure and burning out your terminals if not connected properly. Once the power circuit's completed, it's time to finish the rest of the wiring.
So guys, there you have it, completed A8 build. It took me about six to eight hours to put it all together. There weren't too many complications along the way, but I did have to use both the instructions and the YouTube videos to help me get through some of the bits. As you can see, since I put it together, I've done a fair bit of printing, and I gotta say I'm pretty impressed. This is probably one of the cheapest, if not the cheapest 3D printer on the market. And for the price point, it's actually fantastic. The only issues I had with this printer were those with the power, which I mentioned up front and have addressed through this build. So all the aftermarket parts I replaced, the belt, the power supply, adding the MOSFETs, all worked out really, really well. The build tack surface I bought has been fantastic. Prints have been coming off it with hardly any trouble at all, with only the occasional alcohol spray just to give it a quick clean. So there you go. If you're interested in doing 3D printing, I highly recommend the ANET A8. I'll leave links in the description below for all the parts I bought and where you can get them, as well as a list of all the parts I've printed off Thingiverse, if you wanna print them for your printer as well. So I'm interested to hear in the comments below from you guys, what mods you've done to the stock model A8 and how it's benefited you. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button guys, and you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Until next time, see you around.